What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Today I have the entire range of Game of Thrones scotch. Starting over here on my right, I have the Singleton, Cardu, Royal Loch Nagar, the Dalwini, Klein Leash, Oben, Talisker, and Lagavulin. I'm going to nose them, taste them, and give them a mark. And I'm also going to give you guys a basic price rundown. Starting with the Singleton which is House Tully. So, your basic caramels, a little bit of youth in there, but not bad, it's bottled at 40%. Got some apple, and a grassy note in the background. All right, on the palate, Carries through with that apple, a little bit of caramel on the back end. It's only 40% ABV. Oh, I'm going to give you an Ontario price because that's where I'm from. And I'm going to give you the general price that you should find it for in the U.S. So this one's going for about $30 in the U.S. and $70 at the LCBO. If I had to grade this one, I'd probably give it a high C, low B. Just for argument's sake, about a 69%. Moving on to the Cardu, which is the house of Targaryen. All right, that's Khaleesi's house, or Daenerys. Also 40% ABV, this is a Cardu distillery expression. On the nose, this smells like it's a couple years older than the Singleton, maybe a five-year-old as opposed to a three-year-old perhaps something even around seven years old or a blend of five to seven year old whiskeys coming from the Cardu distillery. Again, you get some apple here. Maybe a honey note, a little less malty. Kind of muted, like I said, it's only 40%, which is 80 proof, so you're not going to get an overwhelming nose on this one. On the palate, very sweet, very smooth, easy drinking whiskey um, for around $85 at the LCBO and $40 in the US. You're looking at a decent whiskey. Ontario prices tend to be pretty heavy. That's based on our tax system. But for around $40, I think this is a pretty good buy. Uh, so this one I would go with. The Singleton, I probably would skip if, if I had to choose. This one's probably a 71 for me, so a low B, B minus. Next up, we have the Royal Loch Nagar. This one's 12 years old, so it's one of the few with an actual age statement on it. Also 40% alcohol by volume, which is 80 proof. This is the House Baratheon. This one's different from the others for sure. Some nice fruity notes on the nose. Perhaps like a fruitcake on the nose a little bit. On the palate. Not as sweet as the Cardu. Um, you're looking at a 12 year old bottled at 40%, so you're getting a lot of that whiskey watered down. Again, another easy drinking whiskey, but this one's a bit more expensive. This one's probably around $100 at the LCBO. It's $65 uh, in the US, which is, for this one, probably a miss for me. So I would give this a 71, which is tied with the Cardu, but because of the price hike on this one, I'd probably pass. 
Next up we have the Dal Winnie, which is from the House Stark. It's called Winter's Frost. That's this one right here. 43% ABV, so 86 proof. This one goes for about $100 at the LCBO, and you're looking at around $40 in the US. This one's nose is actually much more complex than the others so far. I did a head to head with this one in a previous video uh, against the Lannisters because the rival houses. And I really like this one. It's like a cooked apple pie on the nose. A little bit of caramel as well. Yeah, on the palate, much more inviting here. It's sweet. It's got a little bit more going on. There's a nicer viscosity to this whiskey. Um, it's not super viscous, like syrupy texture, but you have a little bit more oils, I think, than the Royal Loch Nagar and the Cardu, as well as the Singleton. And for that reason, I'm probably going to give this one about an 85, which is an A for me. Um, it's... For $40, I think that's a steal. I think this is a great whiskey for $40. For around $100, you can buy better whiskey at the LCBO. Um, when I first tasted this, probably because of the hype, probably because it was very difficult to get my hands on any of these whiskeys, um, I overestimated how good it was. I've brought that back to reality now. It's, like I said, around, around an 85, maybe even a little bit less, depending on your palate. Um, I'm a Stark fanboy, so obviously this one's going to grade a little higher probably because of bias, but uh, 85, so it's still a very good whiskey, and for $40, that's an absolute steal. Moving on to the Klein Leash. The Klein Leash uh, is 51.2% alcohol, so 102.4 proof, all right? This is the highest in ABV alcohol by volume uh, than the others of the eight. This one comes from House Tyrell. And it's got a lot more going on on the nose. You're going to find, especially if you're new to whiskey, that whiskeys with higher alcohol by volume or higher proof are going to have a lot more going on. They have a lot more flavor. Uh, they have been watered down a lot less. That's mainly why. And depending on the company, anything over 46% or higher usually doesn't have chill filtration. Chill filtration is designed to remove all the oils that make whiskey cloudy under 46%. So um, you're going to get more out of a whiskey with a higher alcohol by volume. On the nose, you're getting more butterscotch here. You definitely get the Klein Leash distillery characteristic. If you're a Klein Leash fan, you're going to love this one, I think. It's probably younger than most Klein Leash released, but it's still in and around the seven, eight year range in my opinion. There's a, a grassy note, but a nice sweet grassy note on this one. On the palate. Super sweet, that's definitely because of the higher ABV on this one. There's a nice multi finish Get some nice oak in this one as well. Could be a little bit older than I think. The only reason I'm thinking it's under 10 years old is because it's a Noid Statement whiskey and they tend to be a little bit younger or at least have whiskeys that are younger in them. Um, as long as it comes from the same distillery, it can be called a single malt. But when uh, there's eight year old, seven year old, five year old whiskey in it, uh, if they had to put an age statement on that, they would have to put five years old. So. Uh, I'm assuming that's why they didn't put the age on the Klein Leash, because there's probably some younger mi whiskey mixed in, but there is definitely some older whiskey in here as well. And definitely, uh, predominantly on the nose, you get that grassy note. So if that grassy note's not for you, then this whiskey's not going to be for you. Um, but one of the more rare of the bunch. So if you like Klein Leash, you should definitely give this one a chance. And this one's going for about $60 in the U.S., $100 at the LCBO if you can find it, which will be very, very difficult.
This one's an A for me. It's probably an 87, I would say. Um, I would maybe go down in price instead of up, or sorry, go down in mark as opposed to up if I had to. But 87, I think, is a fair mark for this one. I like that they went with a higher alcohol by volume. Um, it makes the whiskey more robust. If you're not used to that kind of stuff, you just add a little bit of water or no one's judging you add a cube of ice and that'll help you with the higher alcohol by volume or the higher proof. So like I said, that's an 87, very nice stuff. On to the Oben. This is Bay Reserve. Um, when I first heard about this one, I thought it was gonna be very similar to the Little Bay, uh, but from reviews that I've read and watched, Apparently, it's nothing like the Little Bay, so I've tasted it now, and I agree. It's not much like the Little Bay. This is 43% ABV, uh, 86 proof. And this is the Night's Watch edition. It's a little muted on the nose. Um, when I was sipping this last night, I noticed there was a grappa note on that. So that's a Italian unaged spirit, which tells me that this is probably pretty young. Uh, each of these have added color in them to keep consistent throughout the line. Diageo uh, wanted to make sure that all of these looked the same at least, uh, even though they went with different age statements and different alcohol by volume. But there's definitely a floral grappa note on this one, which I like. But I can tell I know for a fact that there's gonna be a bunch of people that don't really like that on the palate It's sweeter than uh, some of the others. I like that. It's a higher alcohol by volume I'm guessing this one's probably only four or five years old. Maybe even less There's a decent sweetness to this one. It's not overly sweet um, this one's about $100 at the LCBO, $65 in the US. I would say this one's a pass for me. Um, I don't think I would buy this unless I was collecting it. You need the whole set if you're gonna collect it, but this one in particular is one that I definitely wouldn't open if I had the choice. I would definitely try it before I bought it. So uh, I'm gonna give this one a 75. That's a mid-range B for me. Um, good, but not great, and not worth the price in my opinion. Moving on to the two peated whiskeys, which is the Talisker House Greyjoy and the Lannister uh, Lagavulin. Um, the Talisker is a no age statement as well, but it's bottled at the traditional Talisker ABV, uh, which is 45.8%. They tend to bottle all of their whiskey at that uh, alcohol by volume, uh, so it works out to 91.6 proof. There is the rare exception where they'll have a cast strength whiskey, but for the most part, they're at 45.8. This one has a nice barbecue smoke to it, like a wood barbecue smoke, something that you would use to smoke ribs and pull pork and that sort of thing. And that sweetness, like a barbecue sauce sweetness. Um, I've I've had people that are new to whiskey try this Talisker and they loved it. It's one of my favorite of the bunch for sure. On the palate. Again, I appreciate that higher viscosity level because of the alcohol by volume. Uh, I would have assume that this one's not chill filtered. The cutoff for whiskey to be chill filtered is 45.6. So I would say that this is not chill filtered. Um, really nice nose on this one. It's sweet. It's got a nice buttery texture and a nice peat smoke, um, which is reminiscent of campfire type smoke and barbecue type smoke. So really, really nice this one. This one I would have to give an 88, so an A. Last up is the Lannister Lagavulin nine year old. I love that they gave this one an age statement. They bottled it at 46%, which is the ideal range for whiskey in my opinion, 92 proof. This one's gonna be smoky. 
It's from the Isla region of Scotland. It's the only one from the Isla region in Scotland in the Game of Thrones series. Uh, Isla Scotch tends to be a little bit peatier than others. But this one is less peaty than the Talisker, believe it or not. It's got a beautiful nose. Honey and light, light, light smoke. Probably something that you would get if you were camping and two campsites over, someone had a fire going. Very light smoke on this one. On the palate. Just a delicious sweetness. There's a salinity to this one, which is probably because of the ocean influence. Uh, Lagavulin Distillery is very close to the ocean. Most of the smoke on this whiskey is from the tail end. So on the finish is where you're gonna get the majority of the smoke for this whiskey. This is definitely my favorite from the range. Originally, I liked this one less than the Dalwini. As the bottles opened up a little bit more, this one trumped the Dalwini by a long shot. Like I said, the Dalwini dropped probably about five points. Um, whereas this one is maintaining the mark I gave in the beginning, which was a 90. It's definitely a 90. That's an A plus for me. I love this whiskey. I think it's fantastic. It's very close to the eight year old and probably marks wise, I wouldn't go much different with the eight year old. I haven't reviewed that one yet. I will review that one. But this Lagavulin Lannister unfortunately wins. Um, and I hope that doesn't happen in the TV show where the Lannisters win, but this whiskey's fantastic. Honestly, it's a really, really good whiskey. This is a 90% for me, A+. Plus. I go by the Canadian scoring system uh, when it comes to letter grades, but my percentage is probably very close to what other people would use. And like I said, this one's a 90 for me. Yeah, and what makes this one so great is the palette. The palette's beautiful. The nose is good. The palette's great. Um, lots of sweetness, a little bit of salinity, and then that beautiful smoke, campfire type smoke on the back end, which is what Lagavulin is known for. So check the Lagavulin out if you haven't already. Guys, the ones that are gonna be most collectible in my opinion are the Lagavulin, the Talisker, the Klein Leash, the Dalwini, and probably the Royal Loch Nagar, even though I didn't love it. It's got a 12 year old age statement on it. But collecting whiskey, collecting anything for that matter, especially if you're a Game of Thrones fan and you don't really like whiskey, you kind of need the whole set to get your optimal value for that collection later on down the road. So I would say if you're gonna buy these, try them before you open them. Uh, the ones that I would open are the Lagavulin, the Talisker, the Klein Leash and the Dal Winnie. The rest I would leave closed personally based on my taste. Um, or I would buy two of those, have the other ones as backups, keep the whole set sealed, and then have the Lagavulin, Talisker, Klein Leash, and Dal Winnie to drink. Overall, I think Diageo did something pretty cool here. I think this is gonna happen more often. It's a bit gimmicky, of course. Uh, a lot of Game of Thrones fans are gonna buy these even if they don't like scotch. I don't blame them. I bought these even though I knew I probably wouldn't like most of them. And I've realized that I was right uh, when I opened most of these. Um, but I do appreciate that there are some gems here like the Lagavulin, like the Talisker, like the Klein Leash, and like the Dalwini. I'm gonna give away one set of all these as samples. And the way to win these is you're gonna be a subscriber, of course. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe now. Um, then you're gonna leave a comment below. Anybody that is one, a subscriber, and two, has left a comment below telling me which is their favorite or which one they wanna try the most if they haven't tried any. One of those lucky people, an entire set of samples that are two ounces each. This way you get to try all the whiskeys and know exactly which ones you would like to open yourself, all right? I will be doing the draw for the samples a month from today, so March 2nd. Um, I will go through the comments, I will choose one of you guys that has left a comment and is also a subscriber. So if you want to get some of your friends in on the action, 
Share this video with them as well. You guys can leave a thumbs up if you like this video. I'm pretty pumped about this season. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. I'm going to be drinking each of these during a live video that I do following each episode of Game of Thrones this season. So it's going to be called Whiskey After the Thrones. If you haven't checked out my Whiskey After the Thrones from the season finale last season, uh, there's going to be one every episode this season. So obviously I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan and... I want to share that information and share that love with other Game of Thrones fans and hopefully we can amalgamate both worlds and bring a lot more Game of Thrones fans into the whiskey world because that's why I'm here. All right. Cheers, guys.